Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mining Chamber video. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Radeon 7. We are going to be talking about the cost of the card and how it flew up in the pricing, and as well as how much you should be buying it for in general and overclocking the card for maximum efficiency or maximum performance. Although there are new cards that are coming out around the corner, we thought that we would mention the Radeon 7 as well because it is one of the best cards that we use for mining so far. So if you guys have any questions or anything that we missed, please let us know in the comment sections below. The Radiant 7 has been out for a while but we thought we should cover it since it is a pretty awesome card for mining. It was a game changer and the first card to ever reach such high hash rates for a GPU. Although now that the new GPUs are around the corner, we will be seeing very similar numbers if not higher. But the Radeon 7 will still remain in the Hall of Fame. It requires 2 8 pin to power up and it is a pretty power hungry card. If the overclocks are not set properly or if they ever reset, it will consume a lot of power. So make sure that you have enough power supply wattage to be on the safe side. Okay guys, so the first thing we want to talk about is where can you buy these Radeon 7s, how much do they cost, how much should you paying for them in general, and whether you should be buying them for your mining rig or not. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and look into the prices of the Radeon 7. So if you go here to Newegg.com, you won't be able to find them available here anymore, since the Radeon 7s are not being produced anymore, so the quantity is very limited to the users that already have them. So now if we go to Amazon.com, it will be the same thing. You'll find some ridiculous prices for the Radeon 7, $2,500. That's definitely not worth the Radeon 7 at all. I mean, it is a great card, but not for $2,500 for sure. So now if we go to eBay, which seems to be one of your only options, the other option you have is like Facebook Marketplace. You can go to OfferOps, LetGo, all these apps that are local marketplace. You can find used deals over there. But now if we look at ebay.com, we are able to find a couple of options, most of them are bids, so it's probably going to get higher in prices, you won't be able to get it for 700 or such. But the only cheap option that we found so far in ebay.com was the 798 deal. So once we click on it, we found out that the user is selling it for $798 and shipping is included too, which is really good deal, so it's still a new listing, I'm sure it will be gone by a week or two. But this is just to let you guys know that you should keep your eyes open for these deals if you're looking to get the Radeon 7s. But other than that, you'll be able to find it average for $900 to $1000. So they are pretty expensive. That is why if you do find any good deals on it, it's going to be a really good choice. So now let's talk about the profitability of the Radeon 7. So we went ahead and went to whattomine.com and then in whattomine.com we are going to be able to check if the Radeon 7 is profitable and how much money can it make you. So if we go ahead and put number one in the Radeon 7 field, that just saying that you have one GPU, and then you want to click on the Radeon 7 name, it will light up and then it will fill all these algorithms with the value of the Radeon 7. Not all of them are really accurate, but they do give you a rough idea. Although for a fact we do know for Ethash on the Radeon 7, you can easily get 90 mega hash, so we're going to change that to 90. And then for watts, usually it takes up to 250 watts. So just to be fair, we're going to go ahead and put 250 watts. And then now for electricity prices, we'll keep it at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And we can go ahead and calculate it. So after we calculate, we can see here, Radeon 7 can make you up to $3.35 a day with Ethereum Classic. So this is if you mine Ethereum Classic. And that's without the electricity cost. So after the electricity cost, you'll be making $2.75. And that is again at the price of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it is pretty good deal. So if you're making $3.35 a day, in a month you're going to be making around almost $100 a month. And all of this of course is at the current prices of the market. So if the prices go up, then you'll be making more. And then if the prices go down, you'll be making less. Before we jump into the drivers and overclocking the card, we want to first thank you guys for helping us reach 2000 subscribers. We wanted to do a giveaway and we're already at 2600 and this would never be possible without you guys, without the community, all of the support that we got from everyone. We want to thank you guys so much and hopefully we will be able to return the favor. So for this video guys, we want to give away $100 in Ethereum Classic. So what you'll need to do is just leave in the comment sections below your Ethereum Classic address and then whichever card you want us to cover next. 
And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to send for four different winners $25 of Ethereum Classic each. So please go ahead and leave your comments below and now let's get back to the video. Okay guys, so now that we covered the profitability of the Radeon 7, let's go ahead and get with optimizing it for mining. So the first thing you want to do is you want to install the latest drivers for your Radeon 7. So just go to the AMD page and then click on second generation Vega and then just select from it the Radeon 7. And after you select that, make sure that you install the recommended drivers, not the optional ones. So if you take a look here, you'll see that there's the 20.4.2, which is recommended. And then these are the optional ones. The recommended will be more stable, so I do recommend these for your mining. And now after you have your drivers installed, the Radeon 7 does not require any BIOS modding. So what we're going to be doing is just overclocking it. And what we're going to be using for overclocking will be MSI Afterburner. So you should go ahead and install MSI Afterburner and then we can go ahead and start overclocking the GPU. The first settings we want to go over is the efficiency settings. So with the efficiency settings here we have it saved on profile number 1. So as you can see here we have the core voltage of 850. So we're undervolting it a pretty good amount. And then we have the core clock set at 1550. And then the memory clock is set at 1000. And then for the fan speed, you can set up your own curve. So we're going to go ahead and activate our curve. And just so you can have an idea of the curve that we're using, we're trying to make sure that we're giving it enough fan speeds to make sure that the Radeon 7 doesn't overheat because it is a pretty hot card and it uses a lot of power. So now if you have your fan curve all set up, you're ready to go. We can go ahead and run the Phoenix Miner. So with these efficient settings, we should be seeing around 80 mega hash. And then off the wall, we should be taking around 190 to 180 per GPU and since we have only one GPU this entire system will be taking around 240 to 250 watts. So as usual we need to give Phoenix Miner a little bit of time to adjust and then after it adjusts we'll be able to see the 80 mega hash. Alright guys so as you can see here we are getting around 80 mega hash and we are getting 146 watts in the software. And then off the wall, we're getting a total of 260 watts for the entire system. So just the GPU would be around 190 to 200 watts. And then the system idling will be around 60 to 70. So these settings will be the efficient settings. As you can see, the graphic card is not getting too hot and it's not using too much power, which makes it really balanced and really good. So now let's move on to our second option which is the performance settings. So we have the performance settings saved at profile number two. We're going to go ahead and load it. Once we click on profile two, you'll be able to see here that it changed the value from 850 to 950 for the core voltage. And then for the core clock, we're at 1750. And for the memory clock, we're at 1100. And then we're using the same fan speed as well. So we can go ahead and apply these changes. And now we should be seeing around 90 mega hash and then we should be taking off the wall a little bit more watts and the fans for the Radeon 7s as well are going to be much louder than they were since the card will be getting exponentially much hotter. Alright guys so we can see here that we hit 90 mega hash and then on the software we're getting about 194 watts and as well as off the wall we're taking around 350 watts which means that these settings are not as efficient. So if we go ahead here and calculate the efficiency for both settings and see how much hash rate per watt we can get. So for our first settings, we were getting about 80 mega hash. So we can divide the 80 mega hash by how much watts we were taking, which was 190 watts off the wall. So at that point, we will be getting 0.42 hash rate per watt, which is not bad at all. And then now if we go ahead and calculate the performance settings, which were 90 mega hash and we were taking off the wall around 350 watts for the entire system so for only the gpu it would be around 290 watts you can see here we are getting 0.31 hash rate per watt so in my opinion i do recommend using the efficient settings rather than the performance settings unless you do have free electric but then also if the room that you're mining in is too hot already then i just recommend staying with the efficient settings so you don't add more heat to the room because of these cards because like i said these cards can go up to 85 degrees and they can be really hot so you need to be careful with that and then as of the overclock settings as well if you have them crashing or anything like this just mess around with them a little bit so for the core voltage for efficiency 
If it keeps crashing at 850, try to do 860, 870. And then for the performance, you can try the same thing. If it keeps crashing, just keep trying to add more on the voltage until it stops crashing. So now that will be it for overclocking the GPU. And now we can go ahead and talk about whether you should be buying this GPU for mining or not and what's our opinion about it. So what we think is the Radeon 7 is definitely one of the top choices for mining. Even though there are new cards that are coming in the line, I do believe they will be very similar in performance. It's just the one downside for the Radeon 7 is that it's hardly available anymore. So if you do need to buy it, it will be at a, such a high price. So in my opinion, it's not a financial advice, but I do think you should definitely catch any deal that the Radeon 7 come in. So if you can find a deal for less than $800, I do think it's worth it. Now comparing the Radeon 7 to 5700 XT, which is much more available, I do think they're both are really great cards. The Radeon 7 is better for density, so if you want to just have more powerful cards and less quantities, then the Radeon 7 is better. But if you just don't mind having more cards and using a little bit more power, then the 5700 XT will be the better option. Since if you get two 5700 XTs, you'll be getting around 110 mega hash. And then for the Radeon 7, this is basically almost a Radeon 7 on full power, consuming around 350 watts. So the 25700 XT will be more efficient and more reliable than just one Radeon 7 at full speed. But then again, if you do need more density, then the Radeon 7 is a great option. So unfortunately, we won't have our affiliate links in the description below for the Radeon 7 because, like I said, you can't find it in Amazon or any places like that. You will need to look for it in local marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUps, LetGo, eBay, any of these markets, you can try to find them there. And if you do and find it at a nice price, then that's great. So if you guys think we missed anything or you have any feedback for this video, please let us know in the comment sections below. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comment sections below. So as of now, we've covered the Radeon 7, the RX 580, as well as the 5700 XT. So if you guys want, please let us know whichever card you want us to cover next. We will basically just cover it from making it as efficient as possible, reviewing it, telling you how good it is for mining. And then we will be putting all these on our website as well. And then eventually we're hoping to be able to rank them up on our website as in like the top options to use for mining. We would appreciate your guys' feedback. Let us know if you have any questions and we hope you have a wonderful day.